it's very rare to enter a museum room and be uh, the witness of the meeting of, for example, Julio Pomar and uh, Martin Kippenberger or uh, Elena Almeida and Jean Tingeli. But this, this room, this room exists, this room of uh, uh, unexpected uh, dialogue and aesthetic confrontation exists here at Serralves in the installation to whom it may concern. To whom it may concern is an exhibition curated by Isabel Braga and Ricardo Nicolao and focused on the group of works from the BPP collection that are about to come and be on long-term deposit here at Serralves. There is a long history of Serralves and BPP uh, working together. This collection, that some part of it have already been with us for, uh, for many years, but this collection was really framed, was built in full dialogue and full collaboration with uh, the team of Serralves. The previous director, Vicente Todoli and João Fernandez, were deeply involved with the team uh, led by uh, Alexandre Melo, who constituted this extraordinary collection. And it's truly a, a, a very unique group of work with artists, the most important artists from, uh, from Portugal and the most important international artists. In the room I'm standing, I'm facing the likes of Matt Mulliken, uh, Julio Poma, whom I mentioned, William Kentridge, Rosemary Trockel, Mike Kelly, Laurence Wiener, Elena Almeida, Alex Katz, Marlene Dumas, so really, the group of artists who over the last 40 years have made significant contribution to the international history of art. Uh, the title itself is kind of interesting, to whom it may concern, is basically when you write a letter and you don't really know who you're addressing the letter to. So you find the most, uh, the broader way to, uh, to address uh, an invisible uh, audience, uh, reader. And it's a little bit what we do when we do an exhibition. We don't know who we are talking to, we know where we are talking from, or writing from, uh, or thinking from, but we don't really know specifically for whom. And that this exercise, that also this exhibition, is, uh, is translating. As I was looking at the, the curator installing this exhibition, more and more I was thinking of a painting by the French painter Vato, a painting from 1720, the early 18th century in France. And it's a painting that exactly looked like that, uh, salon style, where every single wall is almost saturated with, uh, with works, a very different way that we usually install in a museum of uh, contemporary art where we've been uh, taught uh, the lesson of, uh, of minimalism. But if you look at the Louvre, if you look at the Met, if you look at classical museum, this idea of colored wall with a very saturated installation is what people were used to at the time. If you look at the, uh, the images of the 19th century salon uh, that Baudelaire was writing about, it was this way of presenting art. And uh, this painting by Vato from 1720 called L'Enseigne de Gersin was as a painting depicting uh, basically an art gallery. Uh, and Vato uh, painted paintings. He painted other artists' paintings uh, in, this, in the setting of uh, Mr. Gersin's uh, uh, gallery. But each images that Vato depicted up to uh, uh, the boxing or the, the, the idea of putting a portrait of Louis XIV in a crate, in a box, uh, uh, all of these paintings were chosen as an element of language, as a syntax, and a syntax uh, writing uh, uh, a story and an history, of course, 
for uh, for for Vato. Uh, at this moment of time, it was uh, the history of of France and the change of regime in France. Here you have really an history of aesthetic and an history of form and history of friendship because all these artists were uh, most of them not all of them knew uh, knew each other when I see Sol Lewitt and and Laurence Wiener in a uh, in a uh, dialogue but it's also an history of uh, complicity between Serralves between uh, Banco Privado and uh, between the state of Portugal, who has elected Serralves to be the place where this work should dialogue together.